let h be a subspace of Rn and v1 vp vectors in h. We need to show here that the following two statements are equivalent. Statement 1, v1 vp is a basis for h, and statement 2, each vector of h can be written in only one way as a linear combination of the vectors v1 vp. Let's first recall the proof of 1 implies 2. If v1 vp is a basis for h, it implies in particular that v1 vp is a spanning set for h. In other words, h equals span v1 vp, which means that any vector x in h can be written as a linear combination of the vectors v1 vp. In other words, for any x in h, there exists scalars c1 cp such that x equals c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus lcp vp. To show statement 2, it remains to show that the scalars c1 till cp are unique. Now, in general, whenever we want to show the uniqueness of an object, we assume the existence of two such objects, and then we show that the two objects are the same. In other words, if we want to show the uniqueness of the weights c1, cp for a vector x, we assume that the vector x can be written as c1 v1 plus cp vp, but also as d1 v1 plus dp vp. And we show that c1 is equal to d1, c2 is equal to d2, and cp is equal to dp. Taking these terms to the left-hand side and using the properties of a vector space, we have c1 minus d1 v1 plus cp minus dp vp equals 0. We see here that we have a linear combination of the vectors v1 vp that is equal to 0, but since the vectors v1 vp are linearly independent because they form a basis for h, it implies that the weights of this linear combination are zero. Which means that C1 is equal to D1 and then Cp is equal to Dp. So the weights of this linear combination are actually unique. We now want to show that statement 2 implies statement 1, which means that if any vector x in H can be written in only one way as a linear combination of the vectors v1, vp, then the vectors v1, vp form a basis for H. It is clear that the vectors v1, vp uh, span the subspace H, since by assumption any vector x in H can be written as a linear combination of v1, vp regardless of the uniqueness of the weights of this linear combination. Now, to show that V1, Vp form a basis for H, it remains to show that the set V1, Vp is linearly independent. In other words, that any linear combination of the vectors V1, Vp that is equal to the vector 0 has necessarily all the weights equal to 0. So, let's assume that C1 V1 plus Cp Vp is equal to 0 for some scalars C1 Cp and let's show that all the weights are equal to 0. Now notice that we have two ways of writing the vector 0 as a linear combination of the vectors V1 Vp. The first way is the given way, so C1, V1, plus Cp, Vp, and the other way is the trivial way, so 0, V1, plus 0, Vp. But our assumption says that any vector can be written as a linear combination of V1, Vp in only one way, which means that actually these two ways are the same which implies that C1 is equal to 0, C2 is equal to 0, and then Cp is equal to 0. In conclusion, the vectors V1, Vp span the subspace H, and the vectors V1, Vp are linearly independent, which means that the vectors V1, Vp form a basis for the subspace H.